Good morning. Here we go. Dennis and Deanna, glad you're on here. Dennis, I missed you yesterday. I, I uh, was sitting there and saw your lovely wife, and then I'm like, oh man, Dennis isn't here. I was right in the midst of preaching, so I didn't uh, say anything, but <clears throat> missed you yesterday. If you're sick, I hope you're feeling better. And very glad you're watching out there in North Carolina. I hope things are going well there in that new ministry. And Joel, glad you're here. Kathy, Rose, Betty, glad you're on here too. Yeah. Good morning, Kathy. <clears throat> so it is a good morning and uh, sick. I'm sorry about that. I hope you get to feeling better. Speaking of ill, um, pray for Judy Summers. Um, she's having some issues right now and a little bit dehydrated. So you pray for Judy and pray for her daughter Deb and, and uh, her family as they're helping her out right now. <clears throat> and uh, just uh, pray for her. And I know she'd appreciate that. Miss Faye, glad you're on here down there in southeast Kansas. Miss Jan and Benna. Benna out there in Missouri. Benna, I wonder, is it is it decent there today? It's kind of getting windy here, and it is supposed to drop in temperature. High of 40 around noon and then plummet. So I don't know. Tomorrow is not going to be very pleasant, nor is Wednesday, I'm hearing. Uh, I will not be on here uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, we're going on a, uh, our guys in the church are going on a ice fishing trip. So we shall not be on here Thursday and Friday. So we better get everything in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday this week. And uh, pray for us as we uh, head to Steamboat on Thursday to go ice fishing. Um, weather <laughs> could be an interesting trip, right? <clears throat> so, oh yeah, sunny and 50 degrees uh, in Missouri today. I'm jealous. I truly am. And uh, we yesterday, I think my truck said when I went home from church yesterday or went back to church in the afternoon, 63 degrees. I mean, it was... It was a gorgeous day, and uh, so we better uh, enjoy that when we get it, because it is Colorado, and it's probably going to get worse again. So, um, Mark, glad you're on here, too. And Susan, I see you're on here. Everybody pray for Susan Bennett. She has surgery on, <clears throat> on Wednesday also. So, you guys are just all falling apart, you know? I mean, come on now. Let's... Uh, Let's keep it together. <laughs> uh, the old bodies like to give up at times, don't they? But uh, you know what? We, we'll just keep going until we can. Oh, 74 and windy in southeast Kansas. That'd probably be a good day to go fishing. I, I'm, I think every day ought to be a good day to go fishing of you know, some sort, right? So, yeah, bionic people. I right know. Think about... Think about um, how much our people are worth in dollar value <laughs> in all the surgeries and, and joints that they have in their bodies now. That <laughs> uh, Hey, we are a very valuable group of people. So, all right. Well, I'm trying to think of where to start today. I was, I was reading in Leviticus, and I had to share this with my wife this morning. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he, was, uh, he was writing about uh, clean foods and unclean foods. And, oh, Carolee and Nelson's on here, too. And, uh, Dink, glad you're on here. So, uh, all kinds of people. <laughs> uh, almost 80 in Northeast Texas. Oh, dear. 
Oh, maybe that's where we need to go, right? <clears throat> Carith yesterday, it was 72 degrees in Alabama. Beautiful day. Um, yeah, well, spring is coming. It's just not here yet, but it's coming. So anyway, I, I want to share this with you in Leviticus. You know, he's been going over some of the things they could eat and some of the things you couldn't eat. And uh, they, you know, the the meat that they could eat, the different cloven hooves and chewing the, chewing the cud and, and, uh, oops, getting a phone call there. I have to call him back. So, but, um, <clears throat> I thought this one was interesting. It says, uh, in Leviticus eleven twenty two, these are some things they could eat. Even these of them you may eat the locust after his kind and the bald locusts after his kind. What is a bald locust? Anybody have any idea what a bald locust is? And the beetle after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. I don't, I don't know, man. That He says they're, they're clean. You can eat them. I, I don't know that I want to. Anybody on here ever had a fried grasshopper? And could they fry them? I mean... Maybe, I guess they could roast them, you know, they could roast them on the fire, and it's an old locust. <laughs> oh, you guys are such a great help. Yeah, thank you, Faye. It's a locust with no hair. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Maybe, like, at our next church picnic, we ought to have uh, a locust fry. I don't know. Why not? <clears throat> we can fry locusts. We can fry grasshoppers. Now, which kind of grasshopper? Do you want the little grasshoppers or do you want the big ones, like the big flying grasshoppers? You know, I used to try to catch those flying grasshoppers because they make excellent bait for bass and for bluegill. And, I mean, you could zing them out there on a hook with just a hook and let them swim back to shore. You didn't have to do anything. So they, bass love them, so fish love them. They must be pretty tasty. So I don't know, maybe we ought to try it sometime. But I, you know what I wrote in my journal after I I read this? I, I don't know that chocolate, would chocolate be considered clean or unclean? I'm not sure that you could dip them in chocolate. I'm not sure if that was uh, allowed during that time. I mean, you couldn't offer strange fire. I just read where two of Aaron's sons were killed by offering strange fire. And uh, you, you eat a strange... <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Dink ate one after riding a motorcycle. Dink, I remember also one day when you were riding your motorcycle, if you recall, and the buzzard threw up on you. I, I, uh, I still remember that. So... <laughs> Oh, yeah, Jan, I think I'm with you. I will, uh, I'll stay with beef. I, yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, they couldn't eat catfish. Catfish had a skin. And, and so they weren't allowed to eat fish that um, had, a, had a skin, but they could eat fish that had scales. And they could eat uh, uh, animals that had a cloven hoof and ate their cud. Except, I don't know, for some reason I'm thinking they weren't, they couldn't eat a camel. I'm not sure on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, hey, crawdads are good. There is nothing wrong with a crawdad, Carol Lee. Don't, don't be knocking the, don't be knocking the crawdads. They're good. So, but, <clears throat> all right, let's get into this and, uh. So I, so here's what I wrote in Leviticus 11. I'm just, thank you, Lord, for fulfilling the law. I, you, uh, you know, he, he had all of that law instituted just to show them that they, they, did, they weren't able to keep everything, right? And they uh, um, showed that they failed and showed that they were a sinner. And the, the law was perfect in what it was. And it was perfect in showing them that they were, uh, unable to uh, fulfill all of it, and that's why they needed Christ. They needed to look to the Messiah for forgiveness. And Sarah Eunuch, I see you're on here. 
You guys all pray for Sarah. She is uh, scheduled to have her baby on Wednesday, and I'm sure you are excited about that. Probably a little bit on the nervous side too. So, but I'll post that today too. So, you guys pray for Sarah as uh, she's getting ready to have that baby, and uh, I'm sure she and Matt are excited and. Uh, like I said, probably a little nervous right now. So ladies, you understand that I've had babies. You continue to pray for her and, and pray for them that uh, everything will go well for her uh, during this time too. So <clears throat> Wednesday is the big day. So we look forward to seeing pictures of the little uh, baby whenever uh, baby arrives. So looking forward to that. <clears throat> All right, so a couple of things I want us to, to give thought to. I was reading in uh, Proverbs 10, and something came to me, just the question that I asked myself. In Proverbs 10, 7, it says, The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. And I guess the... the and then let me go ahead and read... Verse 9 also, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. So if he walks uprightly, he walks confidently, okay, because he's walking in the will of God, right? And so he has confidence, and, and, and his walk is, is backing up uh, what he tells people is his faith, right? So he walketh surely, and the one that perverts his way, well, it's going to be shown. It's going to be made known. And we're going to see that. And we're going to know that. And, and there is nothing left uncovered by God. Everything comes to light. And we, that's why we need to be transparent with God. And when we mess up, we need to confess it to God, get it right with God, and, and move forward, right? Uh, otherwise, if you try to sweep it under the rug, he pulls out the rug and, and everything is going to be seen. And you're much better to, to deal with it immediately in the small, still voice of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, deal with it there and, and um, <clears throat> then rather having to deal with it later when God reveals it. But the thing that, that reminded me of this, to do this, if you do walk uprightly, then the memory of the just is blessed. And I ask myself the question, it, when, when I'm gone, how will people remember me? How, how, will, they, how will they remember you? How, uh, what, what are the things that they're going to remember about you? Are, are they, I don't know, are they going to remember um, you were one of faith? Are they going to remember that, that you loved them and... and that you cared about them? Are, are people going to uh, remember what you told them, what you did for them, or, you know, how you lived? I mean, what are they going to remember? I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, it, it was a thought to me. And, and I think that sometimes we can get so caught up in, in what we want and what we're doing for ourselves that we forget that our lives are here for Christ. If we know Christ is our Savior, we have zero reason to live selfishly. And <clears throat> we have all reasons to walk uprightly and to obey God and to be the tool that God uses to reach others. And we, we just, we need to be focused on others, not on ourselves. And that this society teaches just the opposite. This society tells you to love yourself, pamper yourself, spoil yourself, and and coddle yourself, and worship yourself, and idolize yourself, and that that's just not biblical, and God, we, we are important, okay, absolutely, and we know that because of the, the cross, and we know that Christ died on that cross for us, and so he shows us our importance, and we ought, to, we, we ought to live with that recognition, but then from there, we need to understand that God wants to use us for his will, and people can use all kinds of excuses to uh, do whatever it is that they want to do, and, and 
They can even try to justify things and spiritualize things, but our lives are God's. And we need to do what God wants us to do with it and and not do the things that that we always want to do, but we ought to do what God wants us to do and live that way. That's when you find true joy and true happiness. Truly it is. And 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 you can find the rest and you know, there, there are times where you need to rest. Jesus did. I mean, he'd go into the mountain and rest and he'd go out on the ship and, and he would rest. And, and I mean, there were times when you needed to do that, but <clears throat> we, we just need to, I, I don't know, get past the selfish state in our lives and realize what it is that, that God wants us to do. And p- part of that then is to, to recognize that much of this is sin and, and deal with sin. Uh, there was a, I was reading in Chapel's thing this morning and, and he was using this illustration. There was a pastor who was um, praying with this man that, that had uh, been dealing with some sin in his life and, and it seemed to keep coming back and he, he would do battle and then fail and come back and, and, you know, it's just a wicked cycle. And we, we understand that. All of us have that in our lives at times where something we have to deal with and we deal with it and think we have victory over it and then it comes back and, and we got to deal with it again. And anyway, this young man was praying and and he was saying, Lord, help to take the cobwebs out of my mind. Get Get the cobwebs out of my mind. And the preacher interrupted his prayer and he said, Lord, do more than that. Kill the spider. Kill the spider. And that—that that is what we need to do. I mean, that just impacted me this morning where we can continue to have this vicious cycle or we can kill the spider and let's kill the spider. And then it can't do put the cobwebs in your mind anymore, right? I mean, that's how you get true victory. And so... Uh, find the source of whatever is causing the cobwebs and kill it. <laughs> now, be careful with that. If you're saying that's your husband that's causing the cobwebs, um, don't don't kill it, okay? <laughs> um, but let's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, Joel, I'm not sure if you're laughing or if that's Maria laughing. So, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, yeah, <clears throat> you know, we understand. But here in Psalm 38, I want to read this because th- this is this is David dealing with sin and, and how powerful this is. I mean, he says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. Uh, yeah, yeah, Maria... <laughs> <laughs> See now you're gonna have guilt. You're gonna have conviction in in those those arrows that we just read about stick fast in you. Uh, you're, you're gonna have to apologize for your meanness to Joel, right? Um, but how many times have we had this where where you do something, oh, and you're like, oh no, and and those air, arrows stick in you. The arrow of conviction in thy hand presseth me sore. I mean, God's hand is, when when we're not living right, God's hand's on us. And, and it's not a hand of blessing. You know, um, in the couples retreat a couple of weeks ago, Firso had a great illustration where talking about a man's prayers are hindered uh, when, when we're not treating our wife in, in a godly and biblical fashion. And and he had a guy stand up and come walking at him and he'd just stiff arm him and push him back. And, and that is what God does many times when, when we have sin in our lives, God's stiff arming us. And, you know, and something else that I read in that book, Sacred Marriage, that's interesting to me is that the, the woman that I'm married to, Teresa, her father is God. And so she is the daughter of God and he's my father-in-law in in that situation. And what am I going to do with Matt if he's not treating Kareth the way that he should? I'm not going to be very happy. Well, God's not very happy with us if we're not treating his daughter 
the way that we ought to, guys. And ladies, it's the same way. You know, if, if you're married to that guy and, and he's this and, and he's a child of God and he's he's one of God's sons, then you better treat him with respect. Or God's not gonna be happy with you either. So and and here we just that's what sin does. Sin, sin keeps us at an arm's distance from God. And we we need to we need to deal with it because it affects us. It even affects us physically. Look at this. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. For mine iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden. They're too heavy for me. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I'm troubled. I'm bound. I'm bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. I mean, he, he just goes on and, and my sorrow is continually before me. I, I mean, all kinds of stuff. But then he says this, he says, for I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. I mean, we, we need to be, and we need to deal with it. And, and look, I'm not, uh, this is for me. Okay. This is my devotion, right? I mean, th these are, this is a, this is everyday living here on, on days when, when I mess up and, and my mind's full of cobwebs and I haven't killed the spider or, or I, I say something that I shouldn't, boy, we'll get into Psalm 39 tomorrow and powerful, the first few verses of Psalm 39. And, and, you, you know, we, we, uh, we, we have to deal with sin and we, we deal with, first of all, you deal with temptation, deal with it in a biblical way and have victory over it, Right. If you fail and you fall prey to the temptation, then you need to get it right with God and, and move forward. And those are the things that he's shown us to do here. And, and, and uh, he, verse 22, last verse, make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. So here we, we, uh, we see how we need to, you know, kill the spider. That, that was a help to me. I, I'm, I'm glad I read that part and, and it was just a, a good reminder to kill the spider. And then I was, I was reading in, in uh, chapel this morning also in uh, Luke chapter seven. <clears throat> My devotion was also in Mark chapter five, what I preached last night at church. And um, it just continuously reminds me as I as I go through the as I go through the the uh, Gospels of Christ, that how powerful He is, and and what He can do, and sometimes I think we we give up on God. <clears throat> What's wrong? Why why would we do that? Why why would we ever give up on God? I, I our our faith needs to be sincere and believe that God can do even the impossible. In, in Luke 7, verses 8 and 9, it says, For I also am a man set under authority, and, and we, we looked at this already too, but this is a centurion whose servant was sick. I preached this out of Matthew chapter 8 uh, yesterday morning, and I set under authority, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and Turned him about and said unto him, said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And then in, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I read these things and I, and I continue to read what, what Jesus can do and has done and is doing. And I just have to ask myself, you know, is, is my faith? what it needs to be. Do, do I truly, when I pray, do, am I looking for God to answer my prayer? Am I truly believing that, that God has the power and the ability to do what I can? I mean, that, that's ultimately what it comes down to. And we need to trust him. You, whatever it is, if you're fighting an addiction, God can help you with that and he can deliver you from that if you'll trust him and walk with him. If, and, and if your marriage is in the tank, well, God can bring it out. 
you need to pray and, and you need to do your part. You know, be obedient and quit blaming your spouse for everything and do what's right in your life, right? And you got a wayward kid. God can bring them back. You got an unsaved family member that needs to trust Christ. You keep praying and keep believing that God's going to save that person. And and I mean, there's there's just good things that that um, God's wanting to do, but He's waiting for us to show faith. So let's let's walk in faith today. Let's let's trust Him today. Let's. Uh, Let's go out and, and let's do what, what he wants us to do. I mean, hey, this spring, we ought to trust him. I mean, those grasshoppers have got to be good. So we ought to just have a grasshopper fry this summer and, and taste these and, and trust that, that they're going to be good. <laughs> oh, I got to end on that. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Hey, it's Monday. Like I said, I'll be on here, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow and Wednesday. Pray for each other, you know, pray for our church family. I, I'm glad you're feeling better, Carol, and we'll, we'll uh, continue to pray for you. And, you know, it's just good, isn't it? I mean, it's just really good to serve the Lord and know that he's got things under control and, and we can live our lives with peace in our hearts and our minds, our lives, and and see his blessings and see his goodness. And so just go out and be used by God today and, and watch God do something great today. So <laughs> come on, Betty. <clears throat> Grasshopper fry at PVBC. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Hmm?